Hey everyone, and welcome back to a new video. I really appreciate all the comments on the Quick Shaper video. I saw a lot of you enjoyed the background music, so you can expect me to keep working on that voice and music balance in this and future videos. For this video, we're taking a dive into my latest tools, Quick Shaper and the PCG Forest, and how you can combine and integrate them directly into your own projects. But that's not all. I've also implemented some small but important updates to the PCG Forest based on your requests. I received a few great questions about using it with collisions and world partition. Now, I'll be honest, world partition was new territory for me, but after a bit of digging, I found a solid solution that I'm sharing with you today. So, let's dive in. I'm working with 5.6 version of Unreal. I'm not using any lumen or post volume. It is just the real-time viewport of Unreal at the moment. I'm starting with a new level. Insert the ultra dynamic sky and making a landscape. Drag the Quick Shaper blueprint on the landscape and change the size so it will cover the whole size of the landscape. Change the fall off mode to rectangle and generate a new landscape by changing the seed and add some erosion to the landscape for more detail. And in just minutes, we have a unique landscape we can use. Insert the PCG Forest blueprint on the landscape we just made. Let's zoom in a little bit for a better view and set our data assets of the forest. I already filled them with some Quixel assets that you can download from the Fab Marketplace. So here is our forest again, but not so big at the moment. Let's make the spawning box a little bigger. And you see that the PCG have to calculate its size. Now change the spline to fit the size of the spawning box. You can see that when I change the spline, it's going to calculate again. So let's clean up the forest for now so we can change the spline without calculating. Add a point to the spline to fill all the corners of the spawning box and change the view to top to see a better view of the box. I change the points to linear, I don't need a curved line for this. When I scaled my spline, we can go back to the perspective view again. And let's generate the forest. It's calculating again. We have a bigger forest now. Let's take a closer look and play the level. And we are walking in our just build forest. Looks more like running by the way, but it goes very smooth. When you walk to a tree, it is enabled with collision. And you see that the forest adapt on the landscape that we made with the Quick Shaper tool. Okay, let's escape from the level and go back to the top view. I'm gonna make the spawning box a little bigger and I will do that also with the spline. You see that the PCG is calculating again and it takes longer to calculate. In the meantime, I'm switching back to perspective view. You see that it's still calculating. But when it's done, we have a bigger forest to run around. Let's play the level again. Up on the slopes, we see that the vegetation is less than on the flat surfaces. I like this running, and it still works pretty smooth on a bigger generated forest. Okay, that's too steep, let's go around. Yeah. 
Yes, we made it to the top. What a view. Okay, I'm escaping the level again and generate some more trees. Wait until the calculating is done. Let's find a good spot to play the level. More trees, I like it. Still works pretty smooth. And back. Let's clean up for a faster change. Let's position our forest to another spot on the landscape, on the flat surface or just back on the hills again. Yes, this is better. And generating our forest again, it have to calculate again. In the meantime, I'm zooming in to find a good spot for running. You see that the trees are also generated on the top. Maybe we have to change that. Let's play the level again. Okay, I don't like the trees on the top. We can remove them by changing the spawning box, but then in its height. When we set a smaller amount, it will remove the trees on the top. That looks much better. This calculating is just annoying. It takes a lot of time when changing things to your forest. Finally, we're done. Let's find a good spot for playing the level, right here on that hill with no trees. Okay, fast forward that. This works pretty good, so let me show you a new feature added to the forest. We start with a new landscape. We drag the forest onto our landscape. Fill in the data assets again. Okay, fast forward that. Back to our forest again. You can now break the PCG link. Just click on the button and it will create an actor of your PCG. You can change the position, but you can also remove individual meshes from the actor. and the PCG, you can generate it again by pressing the generate button. And our forest is back again, no running this time. Let's break it again. And we got a second actor we can use, and so on. And now for the last new feature, we starting again with a new landscape. You not only have the forest blueprint, but you have a extra forest blueprint with WP that stands for World Partition. Let's drag that one in on our landscape. You see by default, it starts with a square spline instead of a circle. This is for making bigger forest fast. Only before it works, we have to enable some settings. First, we fill in the assets. You see that after the assets are been filled, you don't see the forest yet. Select the blueprint forest and go to the details panel, find the PCG component and look for the is partition section. Make sure that is enabled. When this is disabled, the forest won't work. So make sure that this is enabled. Let's go the the outliner and select the PCG world actor. Go to the details panel and search for the word GEN and enable the treat editor viewport as generation source. And now we see something, but not the whole square is filled with forest, only the part in the corner. Let's zoom out a little and see what happens. And now it's gone. When we zoom in, it starts appearing again. The forest now works on where you are in your level and only generates a portion of the grid. So when I rotate the forest, it's filling in on the landscape. Let's play the level because I haven't run that much lately. You 
see that when we running the grid is loading in on where we are in the background. Let's go back to the PCG World Actor Details panel and enable the Treat Editor viewport as generation source. Our forest is gone. But if we play the level now, you see that the forest is still there, you see that it is loading in and we have our forest again. Let's go back. Enable the viewport again to see what we are doing. We can change the settings of our forest like the normal blueprint. So let's give it some more trees. You see that there is no calculating. And let's play the level. We have a dense forest right away and no calculating. Back to the editor. Let's change the size of the forest. We're going in top view and size up our forest like very big. Okay, we made it as big as the landscape and going back to perspective view. Find a new spot to play the level and hit play. You see that my computer is having difficulties in play mode. It's very heavy at the moment because we sized up the forest. But when it's loaded we can run again, but still a bit slow. Our grid size is too big for this size. If we go back to the editor we can change the grid size to smaller amount. So let's go to the graph folder and open the PCG Forest 2. We now see the graph and we zoom in on the grid size nodes. When you select the node you see in the details panel the grid size. We can change it to another figure. The amount of the grid size is the space that is loading in when playing the level. A smaller size gives you better performance. A big grid size is heavy on your machine. I have two grid size nodes. The top one is for the grass, flowers, rocks and so on. The second grid size node is for trees and bushes. Let's change both nodes to a lower grid size, save the graph and play the level. Again, you see that it is loading in way faster. But when running I'm noticing that my machine is slow when a grid is loading in on the map. But I found a solution for that. Let's go back to the editor and let's remove our forest. Drag the blueprint in again and we see our default size again. I fast forward in filling the assets. And when we play the level now it works without slowing down my machine. When running around, you see that the grid is loading in without stuttering. Let's make some more trees, so the loading won't be noticeable. And let's play the level again. You see that the forest is loading in, and you almost can't see that it is loading in the background. It works now without slowing down your machine, and also with more trees. Let's go back to the editor. and fill the whole landscape with multiple blueprints. And play the level again. Now the whole landscape is filled with the forest. And we're running and it works fine, without slowing things down. But you still see that the trees have been loaded in the background. Let's go back to the editor and change the grid size nodes in the PCG graph again to a bigger grid size. When the grid size has been changed, we play the level again. It works pretty smooth now. Then for the last part, we go back to the editor and insert the quick shaper to our landscape to make some hills and mountains in combination with our forest. Drag the quick shaper blueprint on the landscape and make it as big as the landscape itself.
finding a nice seed for the landscape. This looks nice already, and we can play the level again and take a nice run into our very big forest on our own landscape. You see that grid loading isn't noticeable, and it runs very smooth on my machine. So there you have it. In just a couple of minutes you can create a large environment with the Forest and Quick Shaper landscape tool. Both are available on Fab, look for the links in the description. And I hope this deep dive was helpful. Leave your feedback or any questions about the tools or this video in the comments section. And don't miss out on future Unreal Engine content, tips and tool updates. And subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep shaping those worlds.